1765, a new generation of colonists is rushing headlong down an uncharted path to an unknown end, and the Stamp Act is what starts it. Much of the spirit, if not the exact words, is don't you see what they're up to? Don't you see what's going on? There's a strategy at work here to gradually erode American liberties. If you let them do this, what will they try to do next? For the British, the tax isn't about eroding liberties, it's about money. Stoking the colonial reaction is a powerful underground movement known as the Sons of Liberty. They meet secretly in taverns across the colonies and come up with every tactic they can to keep government officials from collecting England's tax. People really started forming alliances between kind of street theater, street gangs, and merchants and artisans, and figuring out ways uh, to all work towards the common cause, which is to repeal the Stamp Act. Soon enough, things begin to get ugly. Intimidation is a favorite weapon. Those who remain loyal to the king, known as loyalists or Tories, often find themselves terrorized by these self-anointed patriots. They often use very dramatic techniques, tar and feathering, for instance. This is a, a great way to humiliate people. First, you're stripped naked. The bucket of tar is heated and you're coated with tar. And then they put these feathers, these goose feathers, all over you, and you're all hot and you're branching about like a silly goose. After a display like this, how is this person going to publicly oppose the Patriot position? A loyalist printer in New York City publishes a loyalist newspaper, and they come in and smash his printing press while they are also proclaiming free speech as a principle to fight for. That's the nature of war and the nature of revolution. While the angry rabble takes to the streets, men of property and education use printing presses and politics to denounce the Stamp Act tax. 